All right, we're going to continue on with some more examples of um, trig substitutions here and doing these integrals. Um, here's one. Underneath the square root, I see an x squared minus 4. Now, it's not x squared minus 1. If it were an x squared minus 1, I'd be looking at secant squared theta minus 1 as tangent squared theta. But it's not a 1, it's a 4. So essentially what I need to do is I need to multiply this whole equation by 4. So 4 secant squared theta minus 4 equals 4 tangent squared theta. Okay. Um, so what I have, my x squared minus 4, I'm trying to set equal to this thing, 4 secant squared theta minus 4. So the x squared, so add 4 to both sides, x squared has got to be 4 secant squared theta, and x is going to be 2 secant theta. So a little bit of a twist this time when you got something other than a 1 there. You've got to take that identity. Uh, and again, this was the variable squared minus the constant. So that's why I got thinking this one. And sure enough, I can do this with x equals 2 secant theta. So x equals 2 secant theta. dx then would have to equal uh, 2 secant theta tan theta d theta. Right? And one thing I want to point out here is that some people when they start learning how to do integrals, they're lazy. They don't ever write the dx down. Um, the problem is, when you start doing substitutions, actually both u substitutions and particularly these trick substitutions, if you're in the habit of not writing the dx there, you might forget to substitute for it. Um, and you got to substitute for it. We've got to turn this whole integral into the dx. So, uh, what do I have? On the numerator, I've got an x squared, so 2 times secant theta squared, so that's 4 secant squared theta minus 4 over x, which was 2 secant theta, times dx, which is 2 times secant theta tan theta d theta. So that initial substitution certainly makes this look more complicated, but we did it with a purpose. That stuff inside there, the four factors out, so you got 4 times the secant squared minus 1. That's all under the square root. Um, perhaps you can see that the 2 secant theta here and the 2 secant theta there are going to cancel out. So I don't have a denominator anymore. I just got a tangent theta sitting out here, d theta. But let's see, the square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of, well, secant squared theta minus 1 is tangent squared theta, so when I take the square root, that's just tangent theta. And then there's another tangent theta right here. So what I end up with is 2 times the integral of tangent squared theta d theta. And I think this we integral we ended up with on an example in the last video. But anyway, uh, I would change that into a um, secant squared theta minus 1. So this is 2 times the integral of secant squared theta minus 1 d theta and the secant squared integrates to tangent theta and that integrates to theta plus a constant. Now I didn't start in thetas so I don't end in thetas I gotta go back. What was my substitution? In this case my substitution was x equals 2 secant theta. I'm gonna write it back down down here. x equals 2 secant theta I think of that as secant theta equals x divided by 2 because that draws me a picture. That draws me a picture where the angle is theta and the secant, hypotenuse over adjacent, is equal to x divided by 2. So if I make this side x and that side 2, then the secant of this angle is precisely what it needs to be. I can then use Pythagoras to get the... Um, the other side here, that's the square root of x squared minus 4. And the square root of x squared minus 4 is the square root that I had to start with, right? Yes. Back up here. When that happens, I feel like I've done the right substitution. So, um, what happens? This is 2 times the tangent of theta. Well, the tangent of theta is the opposite divided by the adjacent side. So the square root of x squared minus 4 divided by 2 minus theta. Well, theta is just the inverse secant 
of x divided by 2 plus a constant. Okay. One more of these where you've got that, that number um, off to the side. How about uh, the integral of 1 over the square root of 9 minus x squared? Now, there are some people that look at this integral and say, hey, I recognize, if that was a 1 right there, this would be, uh, this function here is the derivative of the arc sine, and so this is probably related to the arc sine, and they'd have some way of figuring that out. Um, one of the things I like about trig substitutions is that there's those arc tangent, arc sine, arc secant integrals that if you don't remember them, you have another way of doing it, okay? Because um, those were ones I remember as a student that I I was barely hanging on to how you took the derivative of arc sine and never mind recognizing its derivative to take the antiderivative. So the idea that I had another way of doing this one without just recognizing, oh, this is arc sine of x over 3 or something like that. Uh, nah, I got a better I got another way. So I'm looking at this 9 minus x squared thinking, hey, if that was 1 minus x squared, I'd be thinking 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. But it isn't. It's a 9. So I want this multiplied by 9. I've got 9 minus 9 sine squared theta is going to be 9 cosine squared theta. So my 9 minus x squared, I want to be 9 minus 9 sine squared theta. So that would mean that x squared has got to be 9 sine squared theta, and x is going to be, let x equal 3 sine theta. So when I square x, I get 9 sine squared theta. Well, if I make that choice for x, then dx is 3 cos theta d theta. Substituting all that in now, I've got the integral of 1 square root of 9 minus 9 sine squared theta, right, because the whole x is squared, so the 3 is squared and the sine is squared, um, dx, and dx is 3 cos theta d theta. All right, again, initially it's a little more complicated, but in the end it'll be simpler. So the 3 cos theta is on the top, and the bottom, factor the 9 out, that's a 9 times 1 minus sine squared theta, but that 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. So I've got the integral of 3 cos theta on the top, and I've got a 3 times the square root of cosine squared theta on the bottom. And oh my goodness, the square root of cosine squared theta is theta. Everything cancels out here. This is just the integral of d theta. Honestly, when I first was learning these things and it came down to some, an integral this simple, I'm thinking there was probably something I might have recognized to start with if I could recognize those arc sine or arc tangent integrals. But it's like, heck, I don't, enter, I don't recognize them, so this is fine. Do it this way. What's the integral of d theta? It's theta plus a constant. What's theta? Uh, what was my substitution? Now i got to go back. What was my substitution? x equals 3 sine theta. So my substitution was x equals 3 sine theta. So solving for theta, theta is divided by 3, take the inverse sine. The inverse sine of x divided by 3. So this is the arc sine oops, of x divided by 3 plus a constant. Okay. If you've got one of those inverse trig derivatives that you're trying to take the antiderivative of. If you can recognize it, great. If you can't, there you go. It just comes out in the wash. Do it, a, it looks like a, a trig sub should work on it, and a trig sub works on it, and you get the answer. Okay. I want to do another one that's got a few more numbers in it here. So how about if I had something like this one? Let's do the integral of x squared over the square root of 9 minus 25x squared dx. Okay. 
Now I've got numbers all over the place here. Okay, and the one that I got to focus on is the nine. Just like the last one here, this is very similar. The last one was nine minus x squared. This is now nine minus twenty-five x squared. But it's a constant minus something squared. So I'm thinking in terms of that one minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta. And if I multiply by nine, it's going to be nine minus nine sine squared theta equals nine cosine squared theta. So what I have is a nine minus twenty-five x squared. I want that to be nine minus nine sine squared theta. This is what I want, so I can turn it into a cosine. Uh, this is what I have, so this is what I have. I need to make it that. Um, so subtract nine, multiply by negative one. I've got 25 x squared should equal 9 sine squared theta. So x squared should equal 9 sine squared theta over 25. And my substitution is going to be let x equal 3 sine theta over 5. So I just took the square root of both sides over here. Okay. That's the substitution I want to make. Um, and if I do that, then dx has to equal three-fifths cosine theta, d theta. Substituting in, the x on the top now is three-fifths squared times sine squared theta. The square root on the bottom is now nine minus twenty-five times three-fifths sine theta quantity squared, and then the dx is three-fifths uh, cosine theta d theta. Okay, again, initially it looks really big. Notice what happens here. Um, boy, I've got a three-fifths squared that comes out. i got another three-fifths, so I've got to have a three-fifths cubed actually sitting out in front there. I've got a sine squared theta on the top. That cosine theta is on the top. The denominator turns into, notice that when you square the over 5 here, that the, that's a 25, which cancels with this 25. And so you're left with a 9 minus 9 sine squared theta in there. Right? Well, the square root of 9 minus 9 sine squared theta is the same as 9 cosine squared theta. We set this thing up so that this would turn into that 9 cosine squared theta, d theta. But that's just 3 cosine theta, and the cosine thetas cancel out, and I'm left with, there's a 3 on the bottom, so this is just going to be 3 squared on the top, so there's a 9 on the top, there's 125 on the bottom, I've got a sine squared theta d theta. And I'm going to run out of time before I finish this one. So actually what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, stop right here, and in the next video, I'm going to finish this one.